There were sacrifices from Adam and Eve. Abel offered fat portions. Noah offered sacrifices after the flood. The Israelites offered sacrifices. And they were all pointing toward Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate sacrifice. You see, the punishment from an infinite God deserves an infinite punishment. The punishment from an infinite God deserves an infinite punishment. I have a little trouble wrapping my mind around that. Because God is infinity. One infraction against him deserves infinite punishment. This is the way I see it. If you commit a sin, then after that, it will be forever and ever and ever true. You are a sinner. No matter how long you live, you will still be a sinner. If you sin one time, this is the, this this is this is the this is how it goes with the Holy God. He's pure. If you got if you got a jar of honey and you to you, you stick one one hundredth of a drop of cyanide in that honey, the honey's not pure. Same thing with God. Except with God God is with God everything eternity past to eternity present to eternity in the future is this moment with God. So you commit a sin, God's going to forever and ever and ever see that sin when he looks at you. And he, he cannot stomach impurity. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. You got a debt. You owe God to be absolutely pure. And if you can't, sin is the only thing that, sin is the only notion where you can be in debt and have to pay for it. <laughs> and uh, sin is not, uh, for the wages of sin is death. Sin is our only notion where you can be in debt and get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> for the wages of sin is death. For all, uh, we are we we owe everything to God because He is. He is. We come from God. We owe it to go back to God. And God is pure. If you if you still want if you still a jelly bean from your brother, one hundred billion years from now you still be a thief. One at one time of your existence on the timeline of eternity, you stole. So no no matter how you cannot live long enough to become no longer a thief, it will be there forever and ever and ever and ever. But Jesus. What well, he did, he did not just suffer for a vacation. What God actually did was God turned him over to the devil. God literally damned Jesus Christ. Now, what, did I, what, what am I saying about this? The early church fathers believed it was a ransom. It was a payment to the devil and death. What he did... This is my take on it. What he did, God completely forsook Jesus. Gave him over to the devil. Now when Jesus died, had had Jesus not been God, Jesus would still be in hell forever and ever. He would be there forever and ever and ever. And he was, given over the devil had the perfect right to hold him forever and ever and ever. But there's just one problem with that for him. Jesus is God. Jesus, Jesus said, "No, I'm leaving this place, and I'm taking." The, uh, because he never sinned, he was able to declare us sinless, and remove that sin stain in every one of us. Had Jesus sinned once in his life, those people would have had to stay in hell. He would have been able to raise them from the dead, but they was, was, would have still had the stain of sin and been unable to live with God. Am I making myself clear enough or not? I'm not. Let me repeat. God literally, eternally damned Jesus on that cross. He gave... You say, why does, why does God have to pay ransom to the devil? God is God. Well, because... God is pure. And it, and it glorifies him. It, may, it shows God to be absolutely pure. 
free of sin. If God just forgave us, then he too would be unclean. But God literally damned. God gave Jesus, God handed, handed Jesus over to the devil. And when Jesus died, had Jesus not been able to be God? No, no, no. Had Jesus not been God? It says God had God hath raised him from the dead. Yes, it does. And it also says, Jesus said, I have power to lay my dive down and I have power to take it back in again. God rose Jesus from the dead in the fact that Jesus is God. But had Jesus not been able to resurrect himself, he would still be in hell today and would be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Are you dead in this or am I not speaking loud enough? <laughs> Don't feel bad. I feel rotten about people having to burn forever and ever and ever. I wish that I, I wish God could save the dead. I can. I wish God. I, why do, Why doesn't God just declare everybody righteous? And that way, when you die, if you go to heaven, hell, there's still there will be forever and ever and ever. A way for you to accept what Jesus did on the cross. And so, until the Holy Spirit works out what Jesus did, not, uh, did on that cross, God the Father declares you righteous. But you need the Holy Spirit to work it out in your life. Why can't God save the damned? That's my only problem with God. My, my view of God is he's 99% perfect. If he was absolutely perfect, he'd love even the damned and be able to come up with his way, using the atonement of Christ to save the damned. And I'm wrestling with that. I know there was no Moses. I know there was no flood. I know there was no Adam and Eve. But I, but I, I take the C.S. Lewis approach. It started out as myths. That true myths. That... We all kind of did identify with that described the human condition until Jesus Christ came, and He was truly God. That's that's my take on it. But it's kind of hard believing. It's kind of hard to keep from doubting. 